Hey, how you doing? This is Mike from Level 2.0. Welcome to Fan Access. Welcome to Fan Access. Right now, I'm going to start trying to uh, keep everyone more up to date, uh, everyone in the loop, so they don't think uh, Level 2.0 dropped off the face of the earth. Uh, I know it's been a little while since we've toured the U.S., and uh, right now, we've just been mostly in the studio, so uh, I want to take this time to answer any fan questions, uh, anything about the side projects, and... Uh, Anything else going on or any questions you have? So let's start this up. All right, let's see. What will the new album sound like? All right. Well, if you heard Elevate, um, it, and if you enjoyed it, then you're going to like the new album. It picks up right where it left off. Um, it basically takes that Guibiam sound and it has evolved it. Um, Difference is, I've tried to touch base with all the elements that have been brought up in previous Level 2.0 albums, from that dark, uh, gritty vocals that were in Betrayal and Dreams of Youth, and uh, back like Angel of Light, and uh, even some more up-to-date, darker tracks like Victim from Battle Site Zero. It, it has a little of that in it. But it still has some of those uh, deeper, uh, more broad vocals, like in Elevate. So you try and combine that together, and that's what you're going to get. I'm only halfway done, so I don't know exactly where it's going to go. But it seems like it's going in that direction. I mean, I take it one song at a time. Uh, sometimes something just sparks so nicely that you just you, you go with it. I mean, it's yours anyway, so why not? Um... But it sounds fantastic. I can't wait to figure out what this single is going to be. I, I, at first, I thought I knew this one song, Reminiscence, was going to be the single. But now, listening more to it, I think uh, I might figure out a different single. But uh, it's hard to represent a whole album with a single sometimes. you got to pick a track, and then it, you know if it doesn't do well, people think, oh, well, hey, if that you know didn't do it, then you know why get the album? But to me... Um, I know I'm going to choose the right track to represent the single, um, to set it off, and every track right now, to me, is, it surpasses anything that I've done in the past, so that's the only thing that's making it hard, that's the only reason I'm not picking Reminiscence as the single so far. It sounds great, um, hopefully I can figure that out in the next two months so I can get a single out by the fall, and then I can try to get, uh, Nathan Winter again to do the artwork, uh, that he's done on previous albums. And uh, we can go from there. So uh, it's going to, I have no name yet right now, just, uh, just basically the evolution of level 2.0. So uh, see what, where it goes. And uh, hope everyone enjoys it. I enjoy it so far. And uh, I listen to those tracks every day, trying to see if there's things I can fix on it and to make it better. But basically, uh, it'll be out by the wintertime, maybe, or maybe a little later. But you won't be disappointed. How is it working on level 2.0 alone now without your old partner, Matt? Okay. Uh, well, there's more freedom to um, go in a direction at a faster pace. Um, I loved working on music with Matt. He was like my brother. We started making music in 2000, and uh, in 2005, we definitely found our sound, and that's when we made a name change to Level 2.0 and released our debut album, Dreams of Youth. And from album to album, it was great. It was awesome working with them. Uh, man, I'd go to work, he'd have a song, I'd come home, and I just, it would be pretty much ready for me to just lay vocals on, and sometimes we were just so on page with each other, he'd make, literally make almost the whole song that one day, I'd lay my vocals out in that one day, and we'd have a song re uh, recorded in one day, so it worked out well, we had good chemistry together, um, 
thing is, uh, about 2009, uh, just like anybody, we, we drifted apart. We went in different directions in our lives. Um, he had a lot going on, especially me, um, personally. Um, but I kept at the music. Uh, he did the best he could, I, I guess. Um, of course, he had the army he went into as well in 2010 to 2011. So I tried to continue that album without him and try to take any parts he sent from me, uh, sent to me from Iraq. And um, we made Battle Size Zero work out pretty well. But basically after that, uh, it just faded. And I just kept moving along without him. And uh, I guess that's what happens. Uh, you know, friendships sometimes just, I don't know. Sometimes they, they just take a turn and... There's nothing terrible happened. I, you know, sorry I don't have a dramatic story to say. You know, we, I don't, honestly, nothing really bad to say about him. You know, we worked very well together, and just uh, that's what happens. I'm, I'm happy now. I, I love the freedom that I got with Level 2.0. Uh, I definitely learned a lot watching him over the years. So, in 2009, even 2008, I was making some of the tracks on my own, and. Uh, so I had no problem with the transition. Um, and that's it. It's definitely there's differences between us musically, but we always had the same goal. We were always looking for the same thing. So in my eyes, whether even whether you know he hears it now or not and agrees, it's it's the direction we both wanted to go musically. So he was pretty much going in that direction as well, so it's just life, that's what happens. Alright, next question. touring next and will you ever come to Europe oh, love to love to come to Europe uh, never been there well if uh, you know any promoters that want to bring us over have them contact me at Mike 2.0 at hotmail.com I'll definitely see what I can do um, I'd love to come uh, for touring right now I just want to focus on the new album so uh, I'll putting some shows on this back burner for right now uh, the album is uh, 100% the main priority I want to get the single out by the fall uh, finish up the album hopefully get that done by the winter time and also I have the side projects uh, forced intention with uh, my buddy Jeremy Frey and which we will be releasing a single hopefully within the next few months uh, Saviors Among Us, my other side project. I want to get that single out by the fall. So basically right now, that's my main focus. Uh, I have to, for live shows, I'm going to have to find someone to play back back up on the live synth and do some background backup vocals. So, I mean, I have some friends within the scene that I know can do that, but right now, the album is the most important thing. Um, of course, I want to reach out to the fans and get out to Europe someday, but it's just not going to happen this year. So especially with my schedule and everything, it just it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But definitely we'll keep it in mind to try to see what I can do about getting out to other countries in the next year. And if you know any promoters that are interested in uh, flying me out there, and of course someone else that I would have as a live band member, then have them contact me at mike2.0 at hotmail.com. Um, all my information's on the website 
and my Facebook and etc. Just have them contact me and we'll see what we can do. Um, I'd love to play with some of those bands out in Europe as well, so uh, it'll be some good times. So, all right, next question. What kind of equipment do you use? Uh, I'm all software. Uh, it's too many VSTs to name, so I'm not even going to try to name them all. But basically, to sequence it out, right now I'm using Sonar. Um, my, uh, my buddy Alex, uh, who does all my final production, final production and mastering, he, uh, he's trying to get me to move over to Ableton Live, so maybe... After I finish up this album, I will be moving on to Ableton Live, and there's a lot more capabilities with that, he's been telling me, so, yeah, it's just going to be something new to learn, but I'm open to it, so, but right now, I use Sonar, it works for me, and a lot of software since, I love playing with them, and battery for percussion, and basically, I have a small studio, I mean, it's in my room, I had a large studio back when I lived on Long Island in my Ridge home. Um, I had a, between a recording booth, a control room, I had everything that uh, my, my brother actually built for me. And uh, it was great. It was awesome to have, but right now it's just, it's just in my room and it's the same sound quality I had when I had the full-fledged recording studio. So it works for me. Uh, I definitely miss that studio back in Ridge, but uh, it, this this works for me. So, all right. What are your favorite bands? All right. Uh, I love industrial EBM music. Um, I do listen to music outside the scene, but definitely nowhere near than what I listen to with EBM, industrial, synth pop, goth, whatever it is. Um, when I first got into this, I was, you know, uh, I listened to mostly uh, Apoptigma Berserk and Wumpscut and X Marks the Pedwalk, Velvet Ass of Christ. Um, and as time went on in 2000, you know, uh, definitely loved uh, The Indignation when they first, first really made their mark. Uh, I'll never forget the first time hearing Honor. Um, Assemblage 23, great great project um as a few years later i started listening to more uh, future pop stuff as well as nam nam bulu uh culture culture uh, colony five um still i it's it's a mix there's a lot there's so many bands i can't i can't name them all but uh basically i i love old wumscut weather strip and still listen to it to this day. Still love those albums. Still love to lay down to it and listen to it. And uh, that's what I hope to do. I hope to make uh, music that people can listen to from beginning to end. All right. Next question. What is Saviors Among Us? I saw your post about this side project. Okay. Uh, Saviors Among Us. Basically, it's a new project I'm trying to uh, put together. Um, I'm trying to have different guest vocalists from within the scene all contribute in uh, some duets, 
sometimes they just sing on a track alone and uh, basically I make all the music and um, I have a long list of different bands that I whether I listen to them or just bands that uh, I respect or just friends with and I'm trying to trying different things uh, I'm not saying this is the first time that anybody's ever done this I mean my friend uh, Alex he's done parallel project and uh, it's pretty kind of similar to this uh, the only difference is I, I I'm doing this for myself I I kind of wanted to do something different um, like I have a lot of different ideas and I don't want to always I don't want to just change totally change the direction of level 2.0 so I take some of these different ideas and use it for saviors among us um, with this I've met some uh, very cool people uh, this one guy Steven from Lost in Desire very cool guy uh, he's actually gonna be uh, in the uh, single that I'm gonna debut hopefully in the fall uh, the song is called Eternity um, also I got uh, my friend Mike from Pulse State uh, he's in a track with um, uh, Sarah from Synapse and they did that's a great track that that's probably gonna be on the single as well and uh, there'll, there'll be a lot more about it that I'll post in future blogs. Uh, hopefully I can get some, some of them to uh, maybe video chat some of their thoughts on what they think and uh, what it's like to work with each other. But so far, so good. Um, it's taken a little longer than I thought. But, you know, everyone's got a busy schedule and, you know, can do the best, we can only do the best we can. And... Uh, I'll see what I can do on getting the single out by the fall, the album. I was hoping to get that out by the fall, but every, like I said, with the schedules and everything, uh, it's taken a little longer to get some of their vocals back. But so far, what I've gotten has been superb. Uh, it's going to be very good. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. I'm just as about as excited to release this as any Level 2.0 album. So, all right. Okay, so back to... Uh, Fan access blog. All right, basically, this is the first episode. Uh, I'll see if you know what kind of feedback I get. I'll try to keep everybody posted on the website and everything, and uh, try to put some sound clips of some of the songs. And what I definitely want to do is uh, try to do something like this with my side project, uh, Saviors Among Us, and try to get their thoughts on all the contributors of uh, that album. And see what it was like to, for them to appear in a track with uh, someone else in the scene, hear their thoughts, uh, be pretty cool, and then you know they can talk about some of their bands and what they're doing, and see if I can do something like that. But I got to get them to record that, some of their videos. But uh, some ideas. Uh, if anybody's got any ideas uh, for this blog, you know, any um, you want to shoot at me, just uh, just email me. Uh, but basically, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed the first episode. Uh, uh, next episode, uh, I'll try to uh, talk more about this. Armageddon Casualties. Uh, this was the Rarities album that I just put out. Uh, independently, uh, it was actually, these songs were made before I signed with Nalai Records. So uh, they didn't make the cut for the Armageddon album because uh, it was already, you know, at the limit of how many tracks for an album. So, uh, and I don't think Nalaya at the time wanted to do a double edition album, you know, two CD. So uh, I had all these tracks and I always called it Armageddon Casualties. So I just stuck with the name. Uh, I got DJ Cyclone to do the artwork and with some help from uh, Jason L. Anderson, uh, I made it happen. And pretty much it's a success so far. I've been uh, having a few sales, more than I thought it would have. And uh, it's on my uh, Bandcamp right now at uh, www.level2.0.bandcamp.com. Go check it out. You can preview the songs. You can buy it digitally. There's only a few physical copies left because I didn't really make too many physical copies. i um, thinking of really going more digital in the future. Um, that's where... That's what the sales are going. I, I hate to say it. I love CDs just as well as anybody else. And honestly, I hear people, you know, ranting on about digital destroying physical, you know, the 
for the scene and everything. And hey, you know what? Maybe it is, but whatever. You do what you do. I do what I do. Um, uh, right now, digital has been more successful for me. That's why I did that with Elevate. And that's what I'm going to continue doing until unless, you know, things change and I start seeing more more physical CD sales. I just, right now, I see people downloading more. So it just, to me, it makes more sense. I mean, if people want to rant about it and they, that's their own prerogative. I mean, I don't, whatever. Um, to each their own. Um, the same thing I always say about my music, too. I mean, I'm going to make the music the way I want just because I'm doing it for me, you know. So right now, digital works, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. Uh, and basically, that's it uh, for this show. And next time, we'll be talking more about this. And uh, you got any thoughts, any what, any feedback on anyone that's bought the CD you want to throw at me, uh, e email it to me, and I'll try to post it on the next episode. Anybody even want to do their own reviews on it, you know, just throw me an email, and I'll talk about it and give them a little shout-out on this blog. And I hope you enjoyed the show. All right, I'll see you next time. Take care.